Fakakta Comedy Funhouse Network. Welcome to Couch Pilots, the, sh- the show that dares to fly into the unknown territory of awful television pilots of the past. My name is Jason, a.k.a. the Bottle Cat Black, and across from me is my good friend, Captain Philip Restasher. Good evening, Captain. Good evening, sir. How are you? I'm very good this fine eve. You know, uh, we were in the pilot's lounge, mm-hmm. which was always where we start before we come uh, in, 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 into the plane and get on the microphones. <laughs> Yep, the, as, as all captains do in the cockpit. Uh, and you were—I mean—you were true to your nickname of the bottle cap kid. You were—I think you've popped off three bottle caps this evening. Yeah, I, I like my bottle caps. I like them raw. Is there—is um, there a point where it, you're, it's going to be complete? No, I mean, it's got to, right? I mean, there's only so many things out there. There's only so many different kinds of bottle caps. There's only so many different spaces in my house for a full-size refrigerator. There's only so many things to refrigerate. So I guess there will be an end game. My mom recently said to me, um, why don't you just hang up a cookie sheet on the wall and put them on there? And I was like, nope, that's not how it works. That yeah, would look dumb. Yeah, I'm not going to put a cookie sheet on the wall. What are you, a crazy woman? Your mom is a wonderful woman. She, Very, every, every, I've never heard a bad word about her. No, and... Um, but that's a dumb idea. <laughs> hey, Mom, thanks, but no thanks. Hashtag moms don't always have the right things in mind when they have ideas that they express. About? Stuff they tell their kids. And that's, that's 138 characters right there. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that part. <laughs> um, you, just, you just tweet that. Just, just tweet that and nothing else. Just, yeah, like, hey, let, just, say, just let, let people figure it let out. Let it be known. Um, so speaking of being in the lounge, uh, it, what a wonderful treat today to come in and find that uh, Tarmac John had brought us some of those Little Caesars hot and ready pizzas. Yes, yes. Um, and uh, he's always got our best interest in mind. He's always got our best interest in mind. He's always got a trick up his sleeve. Lord knows he can afford the pizza. Oh, he he, can, he probably can afford to buy like three franchises of it. That'd be probably a pretty good investment for him. Yeah. But yeah, he looks great. I know he had some legal problems recently, but I think we're girlfriend pa- broke up with him. Not yeah, too long. yeah. It, but things, he's no, he is as, as cheerful and chipper as ever, uh, waving around those golden cones as if as if a weight has been lifted off of him. Yeah, it's it's almost like he's floating. Yeah, on the tarmac. And, and I know it sounds crazy. It, it sounds, sounds impossible. Ridiculous. They say you know sometimes when you're up in the air, your mind starts playing tricks on you. Some say, oh, I see, I've seen ghosts in the sky, or I've seen this, and they say, hey, I've seen uh, Tarmac John float around the tarmac. It sounds crazy. It sounds ridiculous. Like, like, like we've been smoking weed. Or it's it. It sounds like we've been smoking all the weed. But the truth is that Tarmac John. I, you know, I think he feels a little bit more free without this girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he looks great. He, I think he's dropped a couple pounds, and he's very limber and light on his feet. Oh yeah, it's it's like it's it's a ballet. It's, it, in some aspects, it's it truly what, is. what he does is a ballet. It truly is a, know, a beautiful dance on the tarmac. Amazing. I, I'm kind of worried about you know when we get into the, the hot days of summer. Mm-hmm. You know, that blacktop is hot. Almost to where it can melt the bottom of your shoes. All the more reason to be light on your feet, you know? Dancing around, not standing in one spot too long. Otherwise, yeah, you might glue yourself right to that tarmac. You think if we could buy one of those hoverboards? Uh, well, I think the batteries explode on those, right? Oh. I heard that, but I didn't know if that was like a Facebook internet joke. Then let's do it. Let's you and I pool our money together right. and buy Tarmac John a hoverboard. Sounds good. I'll so... um. What else have you been up to recently? Um, not much. Uh, I looked at my pilot license the other day, mm-hmm. and it's kind of like a like a driver's license, like it expires, except for the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, except for the air. What made that funny, listeners, was his hand gesture when he did it, and how he surprised me by saying, "For the air." 
I, the, the, the gesture not, not as good the second time around. The gesture was I put my my thumb on my neck and I brought it across like I was going to kill him when I said it. That surprised him too. I think he, he didn't realize I was out to kill you. He didn't realize I was I was out to kill you. No, I didn't. I thought that's really crazy. Who's going to post this? <laughs> oh, we'll find someone to press a couple buttons. Okay. Uh, so I was looking at it and um, first it started because I was like, "What? What?" Because I've been having problems with my weight. Oh, absolutely. And, and I was, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> "How much did I weigh the last time I?" Because I wanted to figure out how much I gained. Yeah. And so I got the pachinko machine running, and I put in my weight now, mm-hmm. which I don't want to say because it's just not appropriate. And I put my weight in when I oh, – it's on my pilot license. Yeah. And it's – You're trying to find the difference. Right, yes. Okay, that, gotcha. Um, the difference in two numbers. Right. So it's subtraction. Yeah, that makes sense. And I was about 53 pounds. No, you have not. Yes, there were 53 pounds. What? Yeah. 53 pounds? Yeah. How many packs of cigarettes do you think weigh 53 pounds? I don't know. I haven't smoked in almost a year and a half now. Maybe you should start again. I'm, you know what? I've thought about it a couple times. But uh, then I noticed my license is expired June 1st. Oh, really? So I've only got a couple of weeks to go and get retested. You'll be fine. You know what you're doing. I, t- I still don't know how to get it off the ground and land it. How I, you- remember, I just... I do all the stuff when we're already in the air. Okay, well maybe. Do you remember any of the stuff that we talk about? No, <laughs> it's not worth it. Maybe, listen, maybe we can. Ser- I can Cyrano Cyrano de Bergiac this mother, and I can just hide in some bushes. Well, you can give me. We can get those little ear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then I can just tell you in the earpiece what to do. I didn't know Cyrano de Bergerac did that. We well, had a huge nose. What was that? No, Roxanne with um Steve Martin. <laughs> What's the point of me even talking? Well, I thought you were trying. To, I thought you were hunting for the words, and I was helping. What was the name of the show? Rock couch Pilots. <laughs> You're listening to Couch Pilots. Three, two, one. Couch Bill Pilots. Oh darn it! <laughs> what the hell are we talking about? I, I, okay, so we just need to we need to formulate a plan to get your license back. Yeah, or get it renewed anyway. Renewed. Because I think I don't think I can. I think this is the time I have to actually take the test. Because normally you just go in there and get it, you know, a new license, right? But I think it's been it's been a while. It's, it has been a while. That was an accident. Either. Has it been a while? It's, it, it has been a while, mm-hmm. and so I think I might have to take the test. So if you don't have to, if you don't have to, if you don't have to take off on the plane and land the plane for the test, I think I'm okay. I, you know, like I said, if we get that earpiece, maybe we All can right. go get the hoverboard. How much do you think that costs? Oh, like a thousand dollars. Oh, for a long range one. How far away are you going to be? Well, I mean, the, I'll be in the bushes, and then you're gonna you're gonna fly off the ground, <laughs> right? Yeah. Maybe I can maybe I can stow away. Well, I, I would think that they would just use a simulator. Oh, that would be a lot cheaper. Okay, well then we'll get some real cheap ones. Okay. How much do you think those cost? Like a thousand dollars. That's what I'm doing. How about you? What, what have you been up to? Um, I've been doing a lot of adult coloring books, um, like the public library. The public libraries have kind of become cool again. You know, it's like they've caught up with the, they catch up with the times. They've got now they've got video games you can rent. You can rent full seasons of of DVDs. There, television shows. You can rent a coloring book. Well, no, no, no. You, oh. you, don't, you don't rent a coloring book because when you bring it back, it's like uh, you know, like, yeah. And then you can rent comic books there, but they have like adult coloring book night. So I'll go there. It's a great way to make pick up chicks too. You know, just, How's that working out for you? Not, I mean, it, it's I, a great way to do it, but you're not doing great at it. That that is a very fair assumption of my experience with it. Yeah, uh, what other, what other guys are doing great. What night is it? It's uh, it's the first Tuesday of every month. It's from seven p.m. to eight thirty, and you can just go in there. You bring your own coloring book. Sometimes they have old ones that have been donated to the library, and you can just sit around and color with like minded adults. So do they play music in the background, or yeah, they put a Pandora station on. Um, it's usually like iron and wine or something crappy sure, like that. Sure, sure. Because it's supposed to be soothing, right? Adult coloring books are supposed to be like soothing and I relaxing. Guess. Like say, hey, say, take a trip back in time to your childhood when you didn't have any cares, you don't have to have any worries, and your free time, just relax, decompress a little bit, and enjoy just coloring in the lines or color outside the lines. Do whatever you want. Yeah, my mom got Molly one and got her a thing of uh, colored pencils. Right. And I looked at it, and my OCD just instantly kicked in and said, I will obsess about this. You know, and like what I, you want the full book colored and, and perfect. 
Yeah, and yeah, and it, like it basically looks to me like it's a lot of patterns. You know what I mean? It's not yeah. like it's not like oh, here's Yoda, color Yoda. It's you know here's not scenes and characters, but just patterns, glass, like thing. stained glass okay, patterns yeah. or something. And I just I, it's going to have to be. This is perfect. Perfect. And I just, it, to me, it would stress me out. Too anxious for you. They're having the opposite effect for you. Yeah. And I'm a big about the, the sharpening of crayons and colored pencils. I, I have a big, huge thing about people using the, you know, the old pencil sharpener to crank yeah, those on you the like wall. Those? I like those the best. Yeah. But people don't know how to use them. They just shove the pencil in there and they just grind. They just well, what's grind. the proper way? You. <clears throat> You delicately push, put pressure on the end of that, and you you're, you go around. But there's a point to where you can feel that it's it's made the main sharpening. Yeah, you just want to point it up, you get it to the point, and so you just it's 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 technique. It's all technique. But check your technique. Yeah, check check your technique. But don't just shove it in there and just grind it in because then you're but you pull it out you got a half a pencil and it's not even the lead's not even exposed wow we le- we've learned uh, quite a bit i think sorry no it's all right this is good this is all good good luck on your upcoming test I'll be, I'll be there to help all right we'll, we'll we'll formulate a plan after the flight sounds good to me ladies and gentlemen the captains have turned on the fasten seatbelt sign so people will often say, um, "Oh, you're doing a podcast. What does that mean?" And I, it's, I say it's a radio. It's a radio show on demand. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. And then, uh, and then, I say, what's your podcast about? And I say, "Well, um, it's called Couch Pilots." And here on Couch Pilots, uh, Captain Philip Collins, rest assured, and I soar through the air with the greatest of ease. And we love to have you along for the flight. But uh, not only do we safely take you to our to your destination, we also talk about TV programs. Horrible TV programs. The ones that were made as a pilot and never shown, let alone taken a series. Um, or sometimes they are shown, usually as part of like a contract or time filler in the middle of the summer. These piles of poo have long since been forgotten, but we believe they deserve another look. We, we watch them, we talk about them, and we invite you to join in on our conversation. What do you think about that? I think you do a very good explanation of what the show's about. And I think it's within the first you know, 10, 10, 15 minutes. I think people are going to know, hey, this is what to expect. What to expect when you're expecting. Right, right. I think at this point, people are saying, you know what? This show's for me. And they hit subscribe. Yep. Or they say, I don't like this at all. I fr- I'm throwing my phone in the trash. Still push subscribe, then throw your phone in the throw, trash. Yeah, sit, hit subscribe first. Tell all your friends, I'm throwing this into the trash because of this. And think of it this way, folks. If you subscribe, what's, what's the worst that's going to happen? I mean, just you won't ever have to listen to it again. Yeah. If you don't like this show by the end of it, there's two things I want you to do. Yep. Go ahead and subscribe now to it on For iTunes sure. or any podcast app. Subscribe to that. But by the end of it, if you're not happy, you can just email us and tell us you're not happy. Yeah, we'll, and we'll, we'll send you your money back. Yeah. No problem. No questions asked. No questions you, asked. You don't even need a and receipt. It, it doesn't even matter where in the world you are because at Couch Pilots, we have a plethora mm-hmm. of countries that listen to us. Yeah. You want me to name a couple? Uh, you start from the alphabetical, please. Uh, how about by the most? Yeah, that'd be fine. All right. Uh, oh, obviously, the United States. Great we're, country. We're, we're huge in the United Great States. Great country. Um, and that includes Alaska and Hawaii. Oh, it does. Great yeah. now. That's perfect. Uh, Canada. Yeah. They dig us. Yeah. France. Good, China. Pretty good countries. United Kingdom. Germany. Are there genuinely people from China that listen to this show? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Ireland. Singapore. Kamichiwa. Spain. Hola. And uh, we have had downloads from the Russian Feder- Federation. Nasvidaniya. And I'm, that one makes me nervous because I think maybe somebody has watched us. But what I find very interesting is that the second highest state in the United States that listens to our show, yeah, California. It is the place we ought to be. Let's pack, gonna, let's pack up our bags. We can load up the truck. Yeah. What do you, move, but what I'm trying to get at here is it's very obvious that Tinseltown is catching on to us. Tinseltown. Why do you think they call it that? Um, I think Tinsel, I think Christmas tree. Sure, sure. And Christmas is a huge holiday. The, the biggest. In um, the world. All over but the world they celebrate. In California, they celebrate a very, very special. Uh, they go out and they put tinsel in their palm trees. And the and the palm trees are all around the town. town. Tinsel town. High five it. Nice. That makes sense. Um, 
I've, I really have a genuine curiosity about life, and I, I like to sit down. Often at work, I'll sit down with people and, and like do an interview with them, and my interviews are very conversational. I try to get to know the person and say, is this someone I want to join our team at the hotel? Um, when I talk to you, when I ask you questions, you You're all – You want to give me a job? Uh, first of all, I'll give you a job. We need, we need a third shift person, 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. You're welcome to do it four right. nights a week. That's awful. <laughs> Second of all, the job's awful. Third – you always have an answer for me. If I sit down and ask you a question, I say, hey, what is, it, what is a, a sweater fuzz cutter? Boom, there it is on your phone. Yeah, I, I don't want you to ever be in limbo. And, and I, I never am with and you. I think that's one of, our, one of the things about our friendship. And if people listen to you know, the episodes of Couch Pilots. You going, can't fake this. You can't fake it. And if you go even listen to IBWIP for the last two years, you'll see that it's just it's meant to be. There's two stars aligned, mm-hmm. impregnated both of our moms, Six years apart. Right. And here we are today. We, we are the literal Romeo and Juliet of podcasting. I, bingo, boingo. I don't think that moniker has been given to anyone else or will be given to anyone else. Because if they do, they're going to have to challenge us. I don't and like good Mon- luck. I don't like Monocle's Pizza as much as everybody says. No? Uh, why do you think they called it Monocle's Pizza? Did someone put a, a, like a small pizza over one of their eyes? Like, hey, check this out. I think it was a real rich guy who was making it. Yeah. And he had a monocle, and then he dropped it. Onto the pizza, and he's like, "Oh my gosh, my monocle went down on the pizza." Do you think someone accidentally ate that and like got a bunch of broken glass? In oh, that, oh, oh, Ugh, boy. I, hey, I shudder to think. But you know what? I don't shudder to think is today we watch "Look Well," starring Adam West from the year of our Lord nineteen and ninety one. Nineteen ninety one. What happened in nineteen ninety? What was? You ever? When we, we go through these, right? And I just think back, like. The first thing I do when I see like what the data, what the year is it, mm-hmm. I'm like, where was I in life? Sure. Things are always happening. And we've created a time system so we can keep track of things. Time is relevant, you know? Sure. So we have, to, we have to try to map everything out to stay organized and say, hey, this is a year and this is the end of the year, beginning and what happened in that time period. Well, guess what? 1991, I'm about to tell you. 1991 is the year that brought us such gems as the unveiling of the Dead Sea Scroll. Oh, they unveiled it. They, uh, they unveiled it. They had it for a while, okay? They had it in their back pocket. Say, I got the Dead Sea Who's Scroll. Who's they? Yeah, they? The Dead Sea Scroll guys? The, the Freemasons. Hey, mm-hmm. we have, a, have an episode just about them sometime. The Freemasons? There's, we, maybe you and I should write a pilot about, a failed pilot about Freemasons. Freebasing? Fre- freebasing Freemasons. What's a drug using Freemasons? <laughs> Controlling the world. A lot of uh, lot of coked up. And we'll get Nicolas Cage to play C- crack cocaine. Is that what Freebasing is? It's, it's it's a style of using drugs, sure. right? Free is, is it huffing like a? The, uh, I think it's like is it like lighting it with a spoon and injecting it with a needle or something? I don't know if it's that. Yeah, I think it's the needle. Freebasing Freemasons. I'd watch it once, <laughs> and I would do a show about it. Um, 1991. Hey, thank God it was the year that Mike Tyson was arrested and charged with rape. Oh, from his wife? Uh, rape, he, he raped Desiree Washington. Hmm. I wonder what ever happened to her. Reminds me of a song, Desiree. Let's just sing it for me. Desiree, I can't take this anymore. Desiree. Who sang that? I, I, it was a song. The Desiree part was right, but the rest of it was right. I can't think of it. But I'll think of it. It's a great song. Thanks. Um, I can't hold you any longer, Desiree. I can't hold you any longer. Right. It's, it's amazing to me how much money boxers make. And, oh, and Mike Tyson's up there with like, get in there. You got two minutes with this guy at most before he knocks your block clean <laughs> right, off. Because right. a lot of his fights are like, oh yeah, pay per view. Pay per views on the rise. Uh, here's here's fifty bucks, and you get thirty seconds of right. Mike Tyson just beating the shit out of someone's face. Um, I can't imagine how much money he made. Um, and how much money this Desiree Washington walked away with after being brutally raped by him. Right, and, and think about it, like how much he's blown, just just pissed away. Just pissed away on pigeons. And then he was in The Hangover. Yeah. So he probably made at least 50 bucks. He, he, was, not in, he was not in Hangover 2, no, right? No, just the first one, because they stole his tiger. They stole his tiger, yeah. Oh, oh no, he was in 2. At the end there, he came out and oh, sang, he right? Yeah, he sang and danced with them. And then he, um, didn't he like sue them or something later for like copying his face tattoo? Yep. Pff, come on, Mike. Come on. Get you know, that's like, that's like taking candy from... I mean, that's like biting the hand that feeds you. Absolutely. 
here, here, here is a great way to stay relevant, Mike Tyson. Right, and then and you spit in the wind. Yes. You're tugging on Superman's cape over here. Like that shit. You don't mess around with Slim. Um, Jeffrey Dahmer is arrested on July twenty second, second of nineteen ninety one, after the remains of eleven men and boys are found in his Milwaukee, Wisconsin apartment. That's I, I didn't know that. No, I. Uh, when I think of Jeffrey Dahmer mm-hmm. and and like Charles Manson and stuff, I just think of like the seventies. You know what I mean? I, I don't. I don't put relevant to time like with Dahmer. That that that. I mean, I was sixteen years old. Ted like, Bundy. Yeah, they all seem like they happened in the seventies. I did. John Wayne Gacy. It seems like they all happened in the seventies. Son of Sam. <laughs> right. Yeah. They all see. You're right. You're absolutely right. Uh, I don't know what it was back then. What the the temperature of this country was rising. Who, Do who, we have? We, I mean, when was the last time we had a serial killer? I think if you really serial dig into it. Killer. I have a bowl at home. It's the only round the Mysterium bowl from What's the that? Mysterium era. Yeah, yeah. How'd you know? Because I watch Encino, man. The only, the only round bowl. All my bowls are square. They're from the Canopy Collection from Walmart. The only round one I have is called. It's a, a cereal bowl, uh, but it's like cereal killer, and it's got the face of Charles Manson at the bottom of the bowl. Weird. And it's part of a collection of cereal bowls with cereal killers on. I got it at Goodwill for two bucks. That's crazy. It's, it's bitching. When was the last time though we had one? Uh, what's that? The R two R R two D two killer R two R T K the Y two K the Y two K killer. He he would uh, bound people and tie them up. He was caught after years of, of dormancy. Hmm. Um, I think if you look on like an FBI website, there are active serial sure. killers out there right now, but none of them have gone. I, I, oh, okay, here's one. Ten years ago or so, the Washington D.C. sniper. Remember that? Oh, yeah. That guy was a serial killer. Yeah, that's true, because he was like just, just shooting people on the highway. Well, he, no, he, I think he would like park his car, he would get into his trunk, and he would shoot from out of right. his trunk yeah. at people at like gas stations and right. shit. Yeah, I remember that. And it, it sounds terrible, but it makes for like an incredible story to know that this person is out there and active. To me, it was kind of exciting. I felt bad that people were actually dying as a result. You of always this. feel bad that people die. Oh, I, every time a person dies, I feel bad. Oh man! If you, oh, the you, people are dying all the time. Oh man! You all right? There goes another one. Oh man! Oh bummer. Anyway, um, and, and the fact that he had remains of eleven men and boys are in his apartment. Why would you do an apartment? I, I, when you how do you do that? When you're talking about like serial killers in the seventies, it's like oh yeah, they found them all under the crawl space. That's where you keep your dead folks. You yeah. don't put them in an apartment. I can I, I can hear the next door neighbors fucking. Yeah, let alone let sawing up sawing bones. Sawing each other up. Ooh, ooh. Sawing each other up? <laughs> All right, buddy, it's your turn. Saw me up. <laughs> Something I learned recently, cannibalism, not illegal. Did you know that? Hmm, did not know that. The murdering of the people, definitely illegal. But once, Eating them? But eating them is fine. Not so much, that's right. Uh, we'll make this real quick here, wrap this up. Uh, Freddie Mercury, um, lead singer of the band Queen, issues a public statement confirming that he is stricken with AIDS, and the next day he dies of complications. Can you imagine announcing that and the next day dying? That's the way to do it, though. That's terrifying. That's kind of like uh, you basically release an album, mm-hmm. do this really creepy video, and then die the next week. <laughs> R.I.P. David Bowie. R.I.P., bro. Um uh, but like, I mean, that that is terrifying. At a time when when AIDS is really gaining momentum, sure. someone announcing it and dying the next day, someone of prominence, right? It's like that hey. is terrifying. Yeah, I mean, in, in New York and Hell's Kitchen, I mean, mm-hmm. there were people just dying left and right. Like they wiped out a whole community. AIDS did. But here is uh, Freddie Mercury. Got some quilting to do, my friend. I wonder if it had something to do with his teeth. Uh, yeah, now the the Brits are all notoriously that, but, ba- have bad teeth. But all that money he had, mm-hmm. he was rich. You could have pulled a Magic Johnson, is that what you're saying? Some magic something. Magic Johnson's healthier than I am. He has AIDS, HIV. He's got he's got the HIV. Yeah, it's amazing. Money money will cure you. Um, Arnold Sch- and Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, stars in the classic Terminator 2, confirming that in fact he would be back. And, I'll he, and he was. Be back. Hold on, we got Arnold here today. <clears throat> yeah, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger here on Couch Pilots. <laughs> hey Arnold, yeah. get out of here. Okay. I'll be back. <laughs> Come back anytime you like. <laughs> Thank you. 1991. I was 10 years old. How, uh, how old were you? I was 16. I had my license. Uh, got off work one night. Nicole Maltby, who was my girlfriend at the time, we uh, what happened then? We coordinated, and she snuck out of her house. Nice. Uh, snuck her into my house. Yeah. 
and we just made out for like two hours, and I snuck out of my house and snuck her back in her house, would have got away with it. Perfect crime. Got away with it. Weeks go by. Uh Uh-oh. This is back before cell phones. This is back before text messages. This is back when you used to write notes to each other, and then the girls would always fold them up real cute. Do you like me, yes or no? Oh, no, these were extensive notes. But they would fold them in weird ways that, like, it was like a lock. Yeah. And then you unfold it, but a guy could never fold it back the way it's supposed to be. It's like a map, trying to put a map back together. Right, exactly. And uh, my stepmom, who was very, very nosy, I was living with my dad at the time, went through my drawers and found a specific note that chronological that event and what transpired and how we got away, how we were amazed that we got away with it. Why would you ever leave a trail? It was in my sock drawer, in my drawer, with my clothes, and my stepmother should have kept her fucking grabby hands off of you it. Strangle that bitch if I right. would. I'd ah, kill uh, her. Oh. oh, someone died. So that's a little. <laughs> That's my new thing on Couch Pilots is I like, I like to try to go back and give you a little snippet of my life. I could my life. I can never um I can never sneak out of my house. My my dad um hasn't he hasn't been to sleep for thirty five years. Wow. Um I remember sometimes um I I used to work till eleven PM, which I actually am doing now, right? And then I would uh I'd go out with this girl and sometimes I'd come home at like four AM to my house and I was like, you know what, I'm you know, I've got I'm not working, or I don't have school this day, so they didn't really care. I was I was a good kid essentially, but I, I'd come home real late, and I, w- I would take a piss, and then I wouldn't flush it because I didn't want to wake anyone up. And then I'd hear my dad say, "Flush the toilet." <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and he, was like, like, he was just laying in their bed listening to you pee. Just listen, yeah. Just like my, my dad could, like, such a light sleeper. I could never get away with sneaking out of the house ever. I don't know how you did it. It was amazing. I was. It was something that I never, ever thought I would pull off in my life. And oh. we, we accomplished it. And for weeks, we were just like, we did it. We, we are meant to be together forever. We do love each other. And here we, you are today. We got away with this. We can get away with anything. Yeah. Um, real quickly, there's, there's three requirements. That um, every time we watch one of these pilots, we, we have to run it through our filter. There's tons of shows out there. We want to watch them all, but we can't. We can't watch every show. We, we got jobs. We have jobs. We have lives. We have to lead. Um, I've got a wife who wants to have sex. You, yeah, you have a, a wife that is insatiable when it comes to sexuality. Oh, just, what an appetite. I, I would say that you and I had a little bit of a threesome with her earlier today. <laughs> yeah, we did have a threesome. It was kind of cool. She, uh, she kissed you, I think, on the mouth and said, hey, good night, honey. And then she came over to me, kissed me on the cheek, and boom. Certified threesome. Yep, exactly. We were certified. Because why? Why is it certified? It was certified. Threesome. There's three reasons. Why, three why? reasons. We were in the same room. Yep. There was three of us. Yep. And it was free. <laughs> it was free. <laughs> if you pay for a, th- a threesome, oh, it doesn't count. Oh, there's four. And the fourth reason. And all three participants were willing. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you, uh, that was a little rape. Joke if, there. if one or two of you are raping the third party. And you have to pay for it. It does not count as a threesome. Let it be known. Couch Pilots said it first. Couch Pilots said it best. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> rape threesome. Um, oh, oh no. Okay, you're, you're, while well, you're gathering yourself, our, our requirements <laughs> are, are very similar to the ones of our uh, threesome. Whereas, if, <laughs> oh no, it's going to pass. Do you need the first aid kit? <laughs> If you want to, if you want to listen to our show and you want to know how we pick them, that pick the TV shows. First of all, you got to know they're free. We're not paying for anything. Two, it's got to be a, a pilot that aired once and only once, or maybe not at all, but only one episode was made. And three, we have to be able to find it. Yeah, we can't just imagine these things. Yeah, we can't say, oh well, uh, it's free because it, I'm not watching it anywhere, and it was only one made, but I can't find it, so I'm just going to write it in my head. Right? That doesn't make sense. No, that's dumb. <laughs> Where can you find Look Well? Um, you can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots and iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube and search Look Well. Everything out there on the internet essentially can be clicked. Sometimes it's a picture you're clicking on. Sometimes it's a, it's a bunch of words or a URL and an email. If you look at our show notes, we give you a brief rundown of what the episode is about, and then there's a blue link down there. It's blue. It's looking back at you. It's saying, I'm safe. 
I am I'm honest, I'm trustworthy, you can believe in me as a link. Won't you please click on me? Won't you? Won't you please? <laughs> Sorry, I'm still trying to get myself together. No, that's fine. Any other colored links? Leave, no, leave it. Yeah. yeah. Leave them be. Am I yeah, right? Yeah, I mean... Like, okay, I'll, I'll give you an example. Please. <clears throat> on my phone, I watch porn on my phone. I don't, wa- I don't watch it on my laptop. Smart. Um, and every day when I go to watch this porn, the yeah. first one I watch, try to watch the first video, it tells me, it stops playing the video and it says, your phone is infected with a virus. Right. So I just cancel out, close out, close all, and then reopen it. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about that. With us, if it's a blue link, it's sterile. Has there ever been... That, that's a great That's a great example. I hope I hope that all of our frequent flyers take note of, of that advice that you've given out. Has there ever been a porno series that was a failed pilot? We have to... If any of our frequent flyers... No, send us the link. Yeah. Blue, blue, and that's that. To me, that's where two divergent roads cross, because if you've got pornography, which can sometimes be laced with viruses, and then you have one of our pilots that we have traditionally with a blue link, hopefully those things don't like. I, I don't. I would never want to send someone a blue link that had a virus attached. No, to it. never. To me, that's the carnal sin of the mm-hmm. podcast. That's why whenever I do the show notes, I I make the blue link obviously, mm-hmm. but I always click it myself just to double check it works. Good, 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 good. Let's take this mother off. See you later, John. Take it easy, John. Uh, flight attendants, uh, prepare for takeoff, please. We have gotten really lucky. With what? We've never really had a lot of maintenance issues. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, when we take off, it's it's effortless. Yeah, it's... You're, you're an amazing taker off. Oh, come on. You... you It's, it's an equal partnership. Yeah. 50-50. Come on. You're the best taker off. Ah, okay. Summary of the pilot. The former star of a canceled TV show solves crimes. It's pretty good. Um, a washed-up TV action hero who, at the peak of his career, was ceremonially deputized by local law enforcement, falsely believes he can solve crimes in real, li- real uh, life. His student, Jason, becomes his sidekick. Pretty good. Pretty good summaries. That's, that's summarized well. Um, I got to tell you right off the bat, I enjoyed this one. It's, I, had a gr- I had a great time watching this. It's a good time. Uh, the... 23 minutes just flew by. I, great, great yeah, I mean, I thought about watching it twice. You should. Um, I don't know if you're re- Are you ready to get into interesting facts? I'm, I'm very interested in the facts you're about to provide. Great. And let's leave it at that because I, I'm going to present a bunch of facts about this show. And there's, there's some good ones in here. Actually, there's a lot of them. And we're going to blast through them real quick. And I want all of our listeners at home to, to hear them, absorb them. And then once once this show is over, you can think, go back and think about them and, and attach whatever adjective you want to them, but not until the show's over. Yeah, don't do it during the show. Like when you read it, mm-hmm. don't. I, I do not want a listener to say anything, any adjective. Right. From now on, for the next hour, you don't know any adjectives. Sit back, relax, and just take it all in. Your brain's got to process all Rewind this. Rewind it later. Yeah, maybe later you'll have a dream tonight that'll organize all these facts for you and, and put them in different columns. Oh, interesting, like not a, interesting. Like an Excel file. A- absolutely. God, give me an Excel file any day of the week. Um, first one, written by Robert Smigel and Conan O'Brien. We all know Conan. Conan O'Brien! Right? No? What's that? dun 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 Dun, 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 dun. The Tonight Show. Yeah. Conan O'Brien, The Tonight Show. No? All right. Get out of here. Who's Robert Smigel? Uh, are, you, are you looking it up? No. Look at me. I'm not. Don't look at the computer. Look, who is Robert Smigel? I, I just know he's a writer. Okay. One of the original writers for The for Conan Sa- Show. And Saturday Night Live. He was for Saturday Night Live. He is Triumph, the insult comic dog. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. He's the hand and, and the voice because it's just, you know, it's sure. synonymous. Um He's he's written a lot of stuff. He's worked with Adam Sandler over the years. He's worked a lot with Conan. He's he's dipped his pen into a lot of ink. Absolutely, he has. Um, this pilot was filmed as a single camera comedy, which was uncommon for the time it was being developed. Uh, writer Robert Smigel expressed doubt about the project that it could sustain itself as a full fledged television series, questioning if viewers would really want to watch that every week. 
Uh, I'm not so sure they would have. Um, I disagree. I, I think there's a lot of great places this show could go. It was entertaining. Yeah. Um, Smigel recollects main star Adam West being enthusiastic for the role, despite poking fun at his acting style. And to me, and maybe we can dig into this later too, but Adam West really does have a distinct style yes. in which he does. Yes, he does. His, his voice is very recognizable. And just the way that he delivers his lines. Cadence. Cadence. They call it cadence. Fantastic. Absolutely. Great use of the word cadence. It reminds me a little bit, not necessarily exactly the same style, but like uh, William Shatner. Yes. Like William Shatner has a way that he delivers his lines and the pauses that he takes while he's acting. Right. It's very Shatner-esque. He's, he, it's, he's got his style. Adam uh, West has got his style. Um. Smigel, he says, I remember one day he, uh, Adam West ran into our office. He was wearing shorts and a straw hat, but not as a gag. Um, and he announced, I've got it. He was dancing on air. He told us that he had been walking on the beach, and he thought about um, everything, and he finally understood the part. He had cracked the code kind of like Batman would. He knew exactly what we wanted to do, and he was exuberant. He was like a kid. I love that image that's, of Adam West. Yeah, and that's Adam West going, <laughs> I, this is a paycheck. To pull it off, I've got to abs- I've got to submerse myself completely. Buy into it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, O'Brien joking, and by about- buying into it, he was basically doing the character. Yeah, doing the character of Adam West. Of Adam West. Uh, O'Brien jokingly stated that when he when the pilot aired, it was the second lowest rated television show of all time. It it's tied with a test pattern they'd show in Nova Scotia. Uh, Nielsen rated it 92nd out of 92 shows, 2.3 million homes for the week of July uh, 22nd through July 28th of 91. Those, it's hard, though. It's, with the pilot, even if it's good or bad, it's very hard to get a lot of ratings that first episode. And, and obviously, putting it in July, they right. showed that there wasn't any confidence in it anyway. We, July is the couch pilot's... No man's land. No man's land. Yeah. I mean, we we know a lot of these. You read these interesting facts. That's what the segment's called. Sure, sure. Um, and a lot of them come up with the fact that oh, you know, July third, this was or July fourth, and that's death. They're not going to show nothing on TV. But if you got to show something, show something that's crappy or you're contractually obligated to show because no one's watching TV July fourth. Mason Reese. Mason Reese. Let's close the book on right. Mason Reese. Um, West, uh, Adam West expressed disappointment with the network's decision and would bring up uh, resurrecting the pilot over the years. In an interview with Seattle Post Intelligencer, uh, West said that he, he has done like 12 pilots and Look Well is really my favorite. It's the funniest pilot that never got sold. Um, I, I know a thing or two about pilots, you know, and I would say... Do you know more than you did a year, six months 20 ago? weeks ago. <laughs> yes. And I think this—I think he's right. This is probably one of the funniest pilots that never did get sold. Um, the set for Ty Lookwell, which is his character, the set for his home uh, has a bust of Shakespeare that's a duplicate of the one in Wayne Manor, uh, Bruce Wayne, concealing the Axis bat to uh, to the Bat Cave via bat poles, controls, and Batman from 1966, which obviously he was a star sure. of. He, Adam West, absorbed the fact that he was Batman, and he milked it for all he could, and. You know, you, you got to ride the wave. You're absolutely right. I think sometimes people get pigeonholed in certain roles, and if you can, if you can't break out of that, then you better embrace it. Because if you don't, then you're going to be a sad, depressed person. Yeah, the rest we've of talked your life. about that before with the grandpa from the monsters. Yeah, you know, another great example is like Screech from Saved by the Bell. Mm-hmm. You know, or uh, Bob Denver from uh, Gilligan's Island. He yep. was he's always Gilligan forever until he died. Until he hit the uh, plane, ran into the mountain. Is that what happened? No, that's John Denver. Oh. No, no, no. no. Bob Denver. Oh, okay. You're talking about John Denver. Bob, Bob Denver, the, the folk singer. The rapper. Hold on. Bye, no, bye. no, no, no. Come on, hey. The is a fight with the war. Vienna. You're, okay, you're, you're way off base here. Really? You we're talking about three different people now. You got Bob Denver, who was the Gilligan from Gilligan's Island. Okay. You got John Denver... Who's the folk singer who, yes, crashed his plane to a mountain. Okay. And then you've got Bob Dylan, uh, who was the kind of, again, kind of a 1960s folk singer. Vietnam Wars No Good. Vietnam Wars No Good? <laughs> yeah. What, what a poet he was. He was. Is. Do you remember when he went electric? Uh, never be. Yeah. I, you know, I actually, actually, I've seen him a couple times live, and um, he's okay. Yeah. He's not somebody you want to go see live. 
I don't know if he's someone like who who tours because he loves it, because if you watch him perform, he doesn't seem like he loves it, or if he's just doing it because he needs the money, which I can't imagine him needing the money. So why is he out there? I've heard somebody talk about John uh, Bob Dylan, and they say, oh, you know, he, just, he, he loves the tour life. But he, again, he doesn't look like he enjoys it. Uh, no, he doesn't enjoy the tour life. He enjoys the paycheck. You don't make money off selling records. You make money off touring. Does, does he have a couple ex-wives that he's paying out? I can't imagine. I don't know. <laughs> can, you, can you do the rest of the show? <laughs> this is Bob Dylan. Don't tempt me. Here comes the story of the hurricane. The man of the world came to blame. See, I don't even know any of the words to his songs. For something that he never done. Do you remember that song he did with the Wallflowers? No. What's this? <laughs> That's... Now we're talking about a fourth person here. You got Bob Denver from he's Gilligan. You got John Denver, folk singer of the mountain. You got the classic uh, folk singer Bob Dylan, and then you've got Jacob Dylan, his son from the Wallflowers. Are you getting all this? I'm, I'm mapping it out. Okay, do whatever you got to do. I mean, you you seem I, uh, very confused. There's been a lot of good Jake Gyllenhaal movies. The Brokeback Mountain. Okay, you know what? I don't. We don't have time to, to really get into this. You're obviously very confused. I don't know if they look alike to you or if their names sound similar, but you are way off base. Sorry. Sorry. I'm not mad. I just... <sighs> okay. This episode has been described as having an underground following over the years and was popular on eBay for a time before being made available as a video file, which is how we saw it, uh, due to in part of the resurgence of cult popularity for what Adam West. Uh, the version in general circulation on the internet is not the original as aired episode. It comes from a later showing on Trio, which is uh, where it was taped from that we saw because yep. it had a little icon in the corner. Uh, a cable station, which for unknown reasons has a few cuts with alternate uh, jokes and takes inserted. Uh, one major difference may be due to music rights issues. A version of the original episode as aired on NBC was known to be circulated by tape traders. However, due to the age, high quality copies are difficult to find. Huh. So I don't. We watched a version of it. Yeah, and, and the quality wasn't too bad. It was all right. Uh, comedian Bill Maher, which I have again, someone else I've seen live, uh, has also expressed how much he liked Look Well. Uh, the pilot was broadcast in on NBC in July '91, but was not picked up as a series despite being a personal favorite of NBC chairman Brandon Tartikoff, R.I.P. And the final one here, uh, Singles pre- uh, Smigel's preferred version of Look Well, uh, with Adam West uh, busting through the police tape at the beginning, is also screened at the Other Network, a festival of unaired TV pilots. Which, I mean, I, I, this is the first I'm hearing of that. The Other yeah. Network. It's a festival of unaired TV pilots. We have to get in contact with those people. Do we not have to get in contact yes. with these people? Um, feature, uh, featuring live and taped intros by Smigel and an extended interview with oh, O'Brien cool. uh, produced by Uncabaret. The other network, I mean, come on. I'm going uh, to email today. If, you, if you're hearing us right now, the other network, no one else is doing what you're doing. Hey, no one else is doing what we're doing. Let's get together. You know, I'll be the peanut butter. You be the chocolate. Am I right? Uh, we'll be the jelly. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly time. Peanut butter jelly. Peanut butter jelly. Peanut butter. Okay. Great song. Great song. All right. Well, let's get into it. Let's let's not let's stop knifing around. Um, the beginning. They say, you know what? The last show we saw, great mapped out, fully fledged song with lyrics intro. Look well says, you know what? I don't got time for that shit. Nope. Ten, five seconds. We're in. This is this is we're we're into it. The the it's like a little just a little music we have with him like busting through the tape right. Um, they're at an audition for Happy Days, The Next Generation. <clears throat> right. That was funny. And he's got the, the wig on of the big greaser <laughs> hair. And he's, he's got the white uh, T-shirt on with the black leather and the pants rolled up and everything. Adam West is Ty Lookwell auditioning at four. He is named, his No, he, he said, call me Buzz McCool. Buzz McCool. Which is he, great. And, and the thing about Ty Lookwell, the actor... He's the thinking actor. Oh, is that what he said? Mm-hmm. I must have missed that. This is, to me, a lot of things align with my comic sensibility the same way Action Family did that we watched. And this is another example of a of an unaired TV pilot that I, when, while watching and making notes for this podcast, I could not write fast enough. There are so many one-liners. So I, I, I really think I am going to go back and watch this again. There's so many little things that were just so funny and things that I, w- I probably missed while looking down and writing. I, right. I just couldn't write fast enough for this one. It was good. It was definitely good. I, uh, I didn't write as much on this one um, because I, I, I found myself 
watching it. You yep. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, you know, there, there's two things. You can either watch a pilot and take a bunch of notes, or you can watch a pilot and not take very many notes. And the reason why I didn't take very many notes is because I was interested in it. I was, yeah. you know, focused on it. There, there are times I laughed out loud, and I, I would, I would be remiss not to make note of those things. So I, I just, I just kept my pen to the paper. Um, it, so Ty, uh, Ty look well again. He's, he's at Happy Days of Next Generation, trying out for this role. Um, unfortunately, they find out it's already been cast. But he's got a couple people there who recognize him as being the former star for uh, the show called Brannigan. And they, but like they couldn't quite place him, and they're kind of dancing around who he was, and and then they, they kept getting the name wrong. Yeah, they kept getting it. Um, and it was mentioned earlier, this was aired on Trio, and maybe a handful of times, part of a, a series or something called Brilliant but Canceled. Yep. And I, they nailed it. I would, I would be really interested to see what else they have on that list. Maybe things that we could delve into. Obviously. Yeah. You can get right on that. I, I will get right on that. <laughs> and, and the other network. Um, Adam is returning a rental car after this when he sees the cops um, uh, handling like a classic car theft, and he thinks that he can help. Yeah, and what I thought was funny about this was like he, you know, he's got an image to uphold as this famous actor, or so he, he thinks. So he, so he thinks. He goes to this. He goes to this audition, and he leaves. You know, and he gets into his Mercedes or his Rolls yep. Royce, and I'm thinking, oh, you know, he he made a good living. Yeah, and then he pulls into this luxury car rental place, and he yep. actually just renting this car to go to. Yep, just to. To look like a honcho, big head honcho. Yep, and, and while he's signing in there, he's uh, the cops come in, and and we we should note that Brannigan was. I know we mentioned the, in the summary earlier, but it was a cop show, right? So he played a cop for I don't know a number of years. Probably was a successful TV show, maybe ran five, six, seven seasons. And um, so when he sees the cops race by, he's like, you know what? I'm going to see what's going on here. I'm going to try to help. Yeah. And so he pull, he goes there and he starts talking to him. I think they're talking to the owner of the classic car place, and they're like, "Hey, come on, man. I, I thank you. I know who you are, but we got this." Yeah, because he like walks. He just he he just inserts himself into the conversation. <laughs> just walks up without a, a, a hesitation, without a blink in the eye. And he's like, "Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, I you know think maybe this, blah blah blah." And, it, and they're like, "Come on, you know." He has he has the confidence of a much more intelligent oh, man. He has he is oozing with confidence. That's right, and and. and like not well earned either. Like a lot of he's he's not a particularly knowledgeable man. Like he loves Shakespeare and he loves like the feeling and 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 the the procedure of acting. He loves that, but he's not worldly intelligent seemingly. You know, no, because the lines aren't being fed to him. He is an acting machine. He yeah. was a detective ma- acting machine. Yeah, and so you know he can't leave that. That's right. You know, that's just, it's instilled in his brain. Yep, he is paused in a, in a he's point committed. Of time. To that character, even after it's gone. That's right. Um, sometimes, you know, I, I'd hear, um, ooh, Anthony Edwards, he was he was on ER for 10 years. And if someone saw him in public and someone needed a doctor, they they would look to those people. But um, he's like, no, I'm just, I'm an actor on sure. TV. And But this is almost going the other way, where it's like, yes, I was a cop on TV. I, I can be a cop can, in real life. Yeah. And no one wants him to be right. necessarily. Um, he probably doesn't even know the Miranda rights. What are the Miranda rights? Yeah, the right to remain silent. Mm-hmm. Any podcast you listen to has to be on the FCF network. Nice, well done. Oh, <laughs> high five that! Ow. Oh, what's wrong? Well, I, I high fived and you didn't, and so I, I pulled my shoulder. Oh. Well, if we high five, do you think it'll fix it? Let's try one, two, three. <laughs> Ooh, they pop, pop it right back into place. Ooh boy. Uh, okay, so he goes home, and it seems like an okay house, maybe a little dated. Um, and he's, he's got a, like a black maid. Of course he does. Of course he does. Um, and I don't think we meet him during the show, but he's got a nephew or something living with him named Matthew. Yeah. Matt Conway. Yeah. And he, um, do we meet him during the show or not? I don't think no, so. No, but he goes over to, uh, uh, do we call him Ty or, or Adam West? How do you, how do you want to go? Let's call him Look Well. Okay. Look Well goes over to his answering machine. You know, the old antique answering machine Beep. with the tape. And it's all these, uh, messages Heavy from... Hitters. From and they're and they're you know they're hitting names like Spielberg and Coppola yeah and other ones and it's all for his nephew yeah and then at the end he um he doesn't look disappointed he's just like phew not, nothing yeah I don't have to Oof. yeah nothing for me thank God I don't have to mess with anything right <laughs> and I, then, don't, I don't have to learn a different character and then he goes to the refrigerator or the freezer he pulls out a cream sickle and he says well I'll just watch a little TV I got some free time. So he's sitting on the couch eating a creamsicle, watching old episodes 
of his show. Yeah, he opens up a cabinet. It's just VHS tape. It's got they're all labeled and they're all you know episode seven, episode twenty. You know, just watching his old shows, taking and, taking cues, and not him. just watching them, becoming deeply enthralled by them. Like he 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 just melts into that couch. Yeah. with his dream sickle, and just is is completely entertained. <laughs> Loves it. Complete narcissist. God bless him. Um, Adam, yeah, Adam is uh, the next scene. I think it probably goes to commercial from there. Even though they didn't put a nice sign there, it says "place commercial here." Right. Um, what is, they know, the next scene does show Adam uh, again watching Brannigan, but this time on a, on a slightly larger screen from a reel to reel. He is teaching an acting class, and um, he, he keeps hearkening back to things about Shakespeare to show that he really is a lover sure, of, of, sure. of the of theater. The oh yes, of the Ab- art, absolutely. And in this. Um, it was really crazy because I watched this uh, last week, mm-hmm. about the middle of like Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday last week. And yesterday we were watching an episode of Friends, and it was the episode that Joey Tribbiani taught at acting class. Oh, yeah? And it was the same kind of like thing. Like, you know, he came in and acted all acting, you know, and then sat on the desk, you know, and was doing it, – it just it was funny that it was, it was almost a complete like copy of that scene. I am not a fan of Friends, but I think I remember that episode. I, I, I'm not a fan of you either, man. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 you're my friend. I'm a fan of you. You're my friend. Oh, okay. But the TV show Friends. Oh, I'm okay. sorry. I thought, you said, I thought you were saying you're not. You're not a fan. I have. I'm friends. not a fan of you, friend. No, I would never say okay, that. I'm right. so sorry. I, I, I apologize. I sometimes get a little testy. No, it's all right. Um, one, two, three. Speaking of testy. One, two, three. Is this the episode where he is pulling his pubic hair to make himself cry in the class? Yes, it is. That's yeah. why I remember. So something about that is very funny to me. Yep. But the, a lot of the friends. Hey, you know what? If you don't have Marcel the monkey, then no thanks. Yep. I, and if you're not poking, that's the same episode where they think the naked guy from across the street, sure. they think he's dead. So they get a bunch of uh, uh, chopsticks and they put them all together and they make this big, long poking stick to poke him to see if he's alive. Oh, he, uh, he's okay. He's not behind glass or anything. They can poke him. The window is open. They think he's dead. Did they poke him? Yeah. Is he alive? Yep. Spoiler alert. Uh oh. Ten year old spoiler alert. Maybe more. Actually, more. It went off the air in two thousand four. Yep. You've had you've had ample time to know whether or not the naked man across the street was alive or dead. So, uh, look, well, Lockwell is, is doing the class, and then he, he he he's going through his his method. Yeah. And he's like, wait a minute. He thinks back to, you know, the stolen car. Some kid says something in class, yeah, it makes right? Something clicks, and it triggers something in his head. You're right. Uh, what is he? He thinks that they're a transport or something, right? Like they're transporting the stolen vehicles, right? Across over this overseas, or right? Something, because right? that's why they're you can't find any of them because they're shipping them overseas. So he thinks he's got this clue all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. So he rushes down to the police station, and he comes in. And they're like, "Okay, buddy, thank you very much. We've got this." And then a, some guy comes in. Was he like a lieutenant or something? He and, was. Yeah, he was like a detective that was on uh, as the special, like uh, on the. He was on the show. He was a like, consultant. He's consultant. An, he's an actual TV. He's an actual police officer of some degree, but he was a consultant for that show. Right, but before he comes on the screen, like he's Adam West is talking to the the desk clerk guy, and he's like, "Come on!" And he like pulls out his this badge, this honorary badge, like encased in glass. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, "I, I you know, I'm I, is, I should be here. I'm the real deal." And then the guy comes in and says, "Hey, hey, don't kick Ty Lookwell out. Let me. I'll take him to my office real quick. I'll tell." And as he's turning around, he says. Perhaps if you watch a little more television, you'd be better at your job. Right. <laughs> but like, he's not joking. Like he is, he has very almost no sense of humor at all. He's very earnest in everything he says. Right, everything in this is, is everything is deadpan, and it's, it's not even a joke. It's like he honestly believes that what he's saying, yeah, is it's, is making a difference. And it's going to be helpful to that guy. Mm-hmm. Um, should be noted too, while it is a single camera that we mentioned in the, in the interesting facts segment, also as a comedy. No laugh track. No laugh track. Which I, is very beneficial. Yes. I think that would have hurt this show tremendously. Absolutely. So um, so he goes there. He meets his former uh, Brannigan con- uh, consult at the station. They talk a little bit. And he, and he says, you know what, Brannigan, uh, uh, you know what, Ty, we're going to take care of this. Mr. Lookwell, we'll take care of it. He says, well, let me know. I've got a lot of free time. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't have any uh, pressing issues right now. Again, very deadpan, very He's earnest. got some dream sickles and... Uh, VHS tapes and a black maid. They're not going to eat themselves. Um, next scene, again, probably another commercial break. He's hanging around with the students, right? And he's um, 
At a restaurant. Yeah, they're like his groupies almost. They're right. they're listening to his theories. They're buying into everything he says. Sure. They're, they're... He's like a cult leader in a way. Like you, an yeah. acting cult leader. That's they're, exactly they're right. They're hanging on every word he says. And then they, they as he's talking, he's thinking of you know more clues for this. But then they, they do a close-up of him. Mm-hmm. And behind him on the... Because this is one of those restaurants that has pictures of famous people. Yeah. Close-up of his face. He's sitting right next to his own photograph on the wall. <laughs> To no. me, that made me laugh. <laughs> um, it's, it's during the same conversation that he decides to do undercover acting, and because he's, he's he's developing these theories in his head about what's happening to these stolen cars. So, so he goes to um, a place where because they say these cars they're not going out of the country because they're worth more here, right? Because so, they're they're imported. So that shoots his theory out the window, his right. original theory. So the new theory is. Well, they're staying here, but we can't find them still. Maybe they're being altered in some manner. What what locally can alter and switch cars that can turn around very quickly? So he goes to an auto body shop. Yep, because they could be painting them different. That's right. And he shows up there like a milkman almost. Yeah, he looks like a milkman. He's got the white, the whole like white jumpsuit on. Everything's the, white. The, 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 it's a painter's outfit. Okay. You know, but he's got a black bow tie. Yeah, yeah. Like he's either, he's either going to paint a car. Or he's going to pump gas at the next old lady that comes up. Oh boy! So, um, so yeah, he's doing that, and then like he's he uh, he starts saying, "Hey, I'll take care of these painting jobs for him." But he's he's trying to dig deeper. Sure. What illegal activities are happening here? So it's like, "Hey, is there anything else I can do for you guys? Yeah. Is there and anything else you need done around here?" And they're like, uh, "No, I think this is it. We appreciate it, though." It's like, "Are you sure there's not any special projects?" That I could work on, I'd be happy to handle them for you. And the guy's like, "Is he gay?" Yeah, I wrote that. Is he, is he the the younger guy? Like turns around to his boss. He's like, "Is he gay?" And, he, and <laughs> this is the best part. He's like, "He's like no." He's like, "No, man, we're not into that." And then he goes, "That's not what I heard." <laughs> like he's not on the same page with them right, thinking he has he's gay. No idea what <laughs> that's not what I heard. <laughs> this is what I love. We're in 1991. Things have opened up a lot more since then with things like HBO, cable channels. You know, Later in the evening, more things are acceptable. Their hands are so tied being on broadcast television, and yet they can produce genuinely funny comedy, sure. even with these limitations. There's a lot of roadblocks, <laughs> a lot of filters they have to go through. And they, they're blasting through them. They're saying, you know what, that's fine. Give us, give us all the, the limitations you want. We wrote for The Simpsons. We wrote for SNL. We know what we're doing. Right. Um, that's what I really love is when limitations – uh, breed creativity. Absolutely, you, that's, that's one of the things that you've said many times on this, and I've told my children at night. When you I'm tuck like, them in, yep, I tuck them in, and uh, I give them fart kisses. We always do fart kisses. Got, got to do a fart kiss. Can you do an example right now? Yeah. <laughs> nice. You don't fart kiss. I don't. I don't fart kiss. Oh, they, they love it. <laughs> the object is to is to to fart kiss before the other person does. That's oh, the, it's yeah. a game. Yeah, but. I look at them in the eyes, and I, I and I put my hand right up next to the side of their face in a caressing, you know, like sure. fatherly way, and said, "Limitations breed creativity." Yeah, and they go. <laughs> <laughs> a great man once told me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so okay, so now they're back uh, after he kind of said that he's he's called them out on their. And he, spray, he just like sprays the bumper. Yeah. <laughs> What are you doing, man? Hey. Okay, so they're back at his class again, his acting class, and Adam gets another arbitrary clue. Uh, this time, one of the guys uh, says, fast. So then he starts thinking, fast. The cars go fast. Working cars go fast. The Grand Prix. The Grand Prix. That's exactly right. Grand Prix in town. So this time, he, he gets some help. He says, you know what? I did some undercover acting before. I'm going to do it again. This time, I'm going to get this young kid to go down there and be like my manager, and I'm going to be the race car driver. And they go down there, and he's like, no, man, I can't let you in here to the Grand Prix. You're not on the list. And he's like, tell him my name is Dash Carlisle. <laughs> well, and he's dressed up with like a leather helmet and the goggles. And the scarf. And the scarf and everything. <laughs> he looks great. Oh. Classic acting. Um, but when he says Dash Carlisle, I just I lost him, my mind. Tell him I'm Dash Carlisle. That's so funny. I love great names, and that's that's of the best. And in, in, in that Adam West voice and Kate, yeah, yeah. Just... <laughs> and they don't let him in. He says, no. "All right, well, time for Plan B." And then he goes like to try to climb the just fence, starts running and tries to climb the fence. <laughs> they pull him down. They take him to jail. Another another really funny part. Adam West is sitting in the jail cell, 
And his buddy who got arrested with them is being pushed back and forth between two very large Mexican men. And it was a, it was an acting, it was an acting exercise. Was it really? Or, yes. did he, or did he play it off like that? I couldn't tell if it was genuinely what they were doing or. Oh, he's like, I don't know. I, you know, now that you bring it up, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know either. It could be one of the, yeah. But the Mexican guys didn't seem angry, so no, maybe so it really was. It was like he's like, hey, big, big muchachos. But yeah. the, the, his his buddy that went to jail with him, he's a skinny little. Oh, dude. he's snapping his neck, snapping back and forth. These hair. guys are like three three fifty, and they're pushing him, and like it's real, like they're really pushing him back, and he's just going around like a rag doll. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, I love this. Um. Anyway, he uh, he says, um, uh, "What are we doing, wasting our time in here?" He says, "While they're in, they're in jail, being jailed." And then Adam West says. Uh, it's not a waste. Uh, you don't waste time. Time wastes you. <laughs> <laughs> Again, just so serious sure. in his oh, delivery. It's it's uh, it, he, only Adam West could pull it off. That's right. Uh, next scene, they uh, Adam West. He's he's got two theories. They're kind of both in the toilet. He's kind of down and out at this point. Yeah, he's, it's, it's kind of like a dramatic dramatic pondering sequence. Like absolutely, it shows him in three or four different. Uh, backdrops, I guess you'd say, just you know, thinking about stuff and pondering everything until he gets to the great bard. The great bard, the immortal bard Shakespeare. He goes to the park in front of a Shakespeare statue, kind of lays the entire case out. He's talking out loud to yeah. you know, talking out loud to the statue, talking to himself, playing through, just like any detective would, yep. playing through all the facts. Interesting or not? Yeah. Who's to say? Right. Not me. You. Only Shakespeare. Only Shakespeare can tell you whether or not a fact is interesting. Um, playing it out in his mind, again, with no real evidence, no facts, he develops yet another theory. And he thanks Shakespeare and kind of bows away from him and rolls his arms out and runs away. It's it's very like he's borderline insane. Oh, like, it's pretty I, crazy. <laughs> I, I mean, I worked at Zeller for many years. Right. And I dealt with people that were like this, like – Oh, did the, you really? <laughs> you couldn't. You could not snap them out of their train of thought. You know, yeah. what, no matter what it is. I mean, you just you couldn't. Are you thinking about this now, or were you watching it and thinking, I I met people kind of like this? Were you no, thinking about just, that? Then? No, just it's just sitting here thinking about it. That I'm is funny, like, though. Yeah, I mean, you, you would talk to people who thought they were a president of the United States, or you know, or, sure. or like a famous actor. They the one guy I. Living there, in a fantasy land. There was a show called Dark Shadows. Oh, sure, sure. This guy was just obsessed with Dark Shadows. Had scripts and everything, and like he could recite. But he, it's almost like he thought he was part of it. Did he think he was a character from it, or he just was so entrenched? So in entrenched it? in it that he just he he just thought that it was part of Barnabas Collins's family. Hmm. Well, uh, interesting. Anyway, uh, this time he takes a female st- – and I, I don't really know how they got there. The next scene kind of cuts to where they're at this uh, – like really, Yeah, like a fundraising gala. Well, it's because the owner of the luxury rental place he knew was going to be at this gala. That's right. And it was a gala for homeless people. And it was a new – the new theory he created was that the the owners of these classic cars were having them stolen, stolen themselves in, for in the insurance. insurance money. Yeah, so he goes there to kind of dig deeper with the owners of these classic cars. And um, the young girl from his class, she gets her in a nice, beautiful gown, gets all done up, and she claims that she is the daughter of some rich guy. Sure. Um, and then she brings Adam West, who's dressed like a classic nineteen twenties uh, depression era hobo. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote, Ty dresses like homeless, quote unquote. Red Skelton. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Exactly like. This is a scene where I, again, I, I could not write fast enough. Everything he was saying was so offensive and hilarious concerning, like he was talking about eating out of the trash. He was talking about the street being his pillow. Just, I mean, every cliched, horrible thing that you could say about a homeless person, he was saying. And just not, not only, again, just go back to his cadence, but just the, uh, the, uh, the scene he was in, what he was wearing, it was, it was so funny. Right. I was laughing out loud at this scene, too. Um, so, th- so they go to this posh fundraiser, Adam as a hobo, and uh, he interrogates some of the owners of the vehicles. And, uh, and, and this buddy Jason from before, who was the, playing the assistant to the race car driver, now he's playing the valet. Sure. 
and they, they don't they don't get anywhere with with the guy that they interrogate. Oh so. no, no, because his interrogation is just like like stating just off the wall like assumptions, and the guy's like, "Who is this guy? Yeah. What are you talking about?" <laughs> yeah. So they decide they're going to steal the car. Well, at first they're like, "I'm going to hide in the yeah, back." Yeah, he's going to hide car. in the back of the car. Yeah. So they open it up, and he's like, gets in like trying to get in the back seat, like lay down in the back. And he's going to follow. He's going to be with him, overhearing what he says, and he's going to get right. some new info. But that doesn't work out. Instead, the three of them are getting into like working on getting him into the car, and then the owner of the car comes out and he's sees like, what's happening. Hey, what are you doing with my Mercedes? What are you doing? It's my car. And then the uh, and Adam says, "Hey, you know what? Change of plans. Get in the car. We're getting out of here." And since Jason's playing the valet, he's got the keys. He's got the keys. He's got to be the driver. Boom! Boom! So they out. start driving down the road. Cops chasing them. And where do they go? To the luxury vehicle rental place. That's right. They bust through the fence. And I, I, when 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 they finally when they bust through the fence and the car finally stops, it it it's like the hood of the car just falls off. I don't think I saw that. And, then the, and then the cop cars come around it and drive over the top of it. It was. I missed that. Yeah. I, I, obviously, the cars, the or police cars, maybe it was, maybe it was part of the fence. But something just like comes like big, huge pieces of metal. Yeah. I missed that totally. No, it was it was at night at this scene. Sure. So I, I I mean, who knows what? But the cops surround him. They all get arrested, and um, he he uh, before he gets arrested, like he's talking to the guy from. Uh, the the owner of the luxury place and he tells him he's going to do hard time right which is a line that he, earlier from one of his shows so he, his whole life is just a mixture of his old shows and is ripping these lines from everything um but while they're there they see a guy who works there and it's like hey we just busted through here the alarm didn't go off yeah what's up with that it's a new alarm he's like oh well it's not set up yet. it was brand new what, what are you doing here this late uh just do an inventory nope no you're not he knew he was going to be at the art gala he knew there was going to be no one there watching the, the place. He, it turns out that his, his worker was the one stealing the cars. In 30 seconds, boom. Over. And they would have never caught him if, if uh, Adam West hadn't led him there right. in this wild chase. Exactly. Of course. So in, in actuality, maybe he is the, as, as good a detective as he thinks he is. This show could sustain itself as him falling ass backwards into these kind of situations all the oh, time. Oh, sure. He says, you're welcome to the police. <laughs> And instead of like a business card or something, he hands them a, a headshot, which again is just right. is so funny. Like if, if he, <laughs> the fact that the fact that it's he's not even, it's not bent up or nothing. No, it's, just, it's, it's just a perfect. perfect. Yep. And he's like he's dressed as a hobo. And he's, I can't imagine him like you know at home getting ready for this part. You know, putting the the little the makeup on his face to make him look dirty, and then just saying, you know what, I'm going to grab a couple headshots and just perfectly put them in the. Ba- you, you, you never know. You always you gotta, know. Oh, hey, you never know when you're going to meet, uh, meet a talent agent. Oppor- opportunity rarely knocks. Um, and I, I carry around this mixer. Do you really? Go. He yeah. says, in case you got to start podcasting yeah. on a whim. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he um, he says, thank you, hands the uh, headshot. Show's over. Yeah. Show's over. And, they, and they, this might be my favorite part of the show. Roll credits. It's uh, Adam West, again, sitting on his couch, eating his creamsicle, watching himself on TV. But it doesn't show the TV. The whole credits is just focusing on him watching the TV. Is the smile on his face, the, the look of satisfaction <laughs> yes. sinks into the couch like, ah, I've done it again. Another uh, uh, another day as a detective. Oh, boy. Rarely do I laugh out loud when watching these shows. Rarely do I laugh out loud when recanting the shows. Um, what, what, an, what, a great, what a great program. It was good. Let's listen to a little uh, promo here for our buddies over at Low Blow Podcast. Are you sick of spoiled white people and Donald Trump bringing you the news you could care less about? Are you sick of trolling the interwebs for penis-related news only to end up flaccid? Do you lust for Florida only the way a mother lover can? Then look no further than Fakakta Comedy Funhouse's Low Blow Podcast with Adam Z and Dave Rowan. Streaming live every week at lowblowpodcast.net and available for download Thursdays at fcfnetwork.com. Appropriately inappropriate. Oh! Oh! (laughs) Oh! Oh! I love Dave. I like that voice. It's a gay man that I would love to hug. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't, I don't see gender. I don't see. I've already hugged at him. Sexual orientation. I've already hugged at him. I think I, I shook his hand. I don't know if I hugged him or not. I hugged him. I think I grabbed his butt too. Did he sleep on your couch? Mm-hmm. Is it the same couch you violated? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did you lay anything down on your couch when you did that? Nope. Free balled it. Oh boy. Let's get the black lights out. Hey, uh, low blow podcast. 
Love it. Check that show out. Yeah, it's uh, uh, Dave and Adam up in Chicago. Um, they take news stories. Mainly Rip- Chicago news stories, yeah. right? Uh, Florida. And are they, oh, I mean, that's a treasure trove. You, cannot, you can't sure. leave buried. I mean, they just they riff on them. It's a good time. Uh, both great personalities. Uh, w- and when they come together, it's just it's mayhem. Mildly attractive. They're both mildly attractive. And, and I, you know, it's like a five and a half, six out of ten. Both, yeah, both. Yeah. Actually, I've never seen Dave. I don't know what he looks like. Some say he looks exactly like me. You could do a hell of a lot worse. Have you seen him? Yeah. The, what does he look like? Just like a normal guy. Oh, okay. I got it. No, I wish he he, he couldn't come down to our podcast marathon, which, which was the first time that I met Adam. Had a great time. Uh, we'll catch him on the flip side, though, because well, we're bound to do it again. Everyone had such a great time. We produced such a lot of a quality content that day, too. Maybe sooner than later. Really? Oh, boy. Something's a bubbling. Uh, anyway, check out Low Blow Podcast on the FCF Network. Uh, subscribe to them on iTunes. Leave them, um, leave them a review. Yeah, definitely. They love reviews. Love reviews. Tell a friend about that show. It's a lot of fun. You'll have a great time with both Dave and Adam. But also, just kind of like a like a, a parental advisory sticker. Mm-hmm. Uh, improv. Uh oh, what's that? They, they they think they're pretty good at. It. They think they're pretty good at improv. Yep. But but what? I don't know if they can hang with the big boys. You gonna throw down the improv gauntlet on them? I, I, there's been a there's been talk of a of a, a cage match. You know, Billy Joel said that he didn't start the fire. I think Low Blow started it when they they started chucking stones at us. Yeah, just because they're those uptown girls. Yeah, they've been living in a widespread world. Is that what it is? Yeah, they never met these backstreet guys. <laughs> We're street toughs. Their mama never told them why. I, I don't think I'll ever understand it, but uh, Look Well apparently didn't work for some reason, and we're going to find out why. Please remain seated as we are now crossing a zone of turbulence. To me, this is almost exactly like Action Family. This is too smart for its audience. It was at a time when uh, we weren't ready for this type of comedy. No, and most people kind of saw Adam West as maybe a washed-up Batman. Sure. I, I mean, I think we said in the interesting facts section that he has uh, a, you know, a cult status resurgence probably in the past 10 years. Sure. And I think, honestly, no small part to Seth MacFarlane having him on Family Guy. Yeah. I think you know, the bizarreness that really is probably a version. Because he's a mayor? He yeah, was a mayor. He's a, he's a version of Mayor West playing himself right. on that show. Um, yeah, it's probably helped him reach at least – I mean, people know who he is at least from sure. Family Guy. but Another generation of people – Associating with absolutely, him. absolutely. So, um, absolutely, <laughs> agreed. This would be very well suited, and, I, and you know, it's something that honestly, I think Conan could try again. Maybe not with Adam West. Maybe Adam West was the only character that could be in that role. I, I tell you what, I, I uh, it's it's difficult for me to think of someone else who would have done well that would have pulled off this type of person, this type of of character. Done well. I think that could be the next one. He said done well instead of look well. So there's something. This is an idea. They're not all gold. Not that all my ideas are golden. The dead idea. The idea just died. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I. it was more of a, oh, I, missed, I missed the setup. I was, uh, it's my responsibility as your co-pilot to, to... Yeah, you really didn't have my back on that one. We should, usually we are back-to-back, but... Not on that one, apparently. Nope. <laughs> Anywho, um, it, it, honestly, maybe Adam West was the only guy for the job. Maybe they perfectly nailed who was supposed to play look well, and it just didn't take off. But I know since then, since obviously the the prominence that Conan has taken on over the years with uh, was it the Late Show, and then it was is it the Late Show? No, it was um, late, late Night. Late Night. Late Night. Oh, man. Oh, Brian. And then the Tonight Show, and now just Conan, I think it's called. Um, he's got a production company. He does produce television shows here and there. Did you know he plays a guitar? Oh, yeah. I never knew that. Oh, yeah. That's one of the bits he would do. He would play like a good night song to where he'd, he'd, he'd strum it very slowly, and then um, he would sing to the audience like as a, a lullaby. I think he also played a couple times like on his final episodes when he was transitioning out of um, the – what was it called? I can't – it's not Late Night, was it? Yeah. Late Night. Okay. I, t- tonight Show and The Late Show, it all sounds the same. Yeah. Anyway – this is something if he wanted to and can find the right person, he could definitely take another stab at it. Um, Cartoon Network would pick something like this up definitely. instantly. Uh, I think it could have a good run. It's definitely a good idea. 
Um, it's just it to me it was not the right time. And a Netflix series do oh yeah for do, sure do six two six episodes. Is there anything in this show that you saw that you're like ah this didn't this didn't work for this reason? No, it was all good. I liked it. It was really it. good, right? Yeah. It was well thought out. It was to me. It looked like it might have been a little expensive, too. I mean, in in the scheme of things, not crazy. But as far as just a pilot, a pilot yeah. I mean, there was a lot of on location stuff. There was a lot of it was it was a lot of see different scenes. Sure, I remember like uh, Adventures in Babysitting. That was a really shitty pilot. It had, but it was looked three. like it had like three yeah. sets. Yeah, just anyway. Um, there's not a lot here that I would say that we could do to improve it. I, I think it was very solid. You got two great writers in Conan and, and Robert Smigel, and um, it's it's a real shame that it never took off. Things like uh, modern day cult hits like uh, Arrested Development, they were at least given a chance, given a life, and to produce three, four seasons. But this one, just one episode. Yeah, and I I still think we're in a, in, a, in an era of television that we're reviewing that you you had a very very short leash, and yeah. you didn't have enough time to. But nowadays, I think. When a lot of shows, they give you that five or six episodes. I mean, if it, if, it, if it shows promise, they give you those five or six episodes to, to fill your way out. Yeah, you know, Netflix doesn't... Seinfeld sucked the first half season almost. Yeah, they were given an opportunity. Yeah. I think it started in eight, it went like 89 to 97, 98, something like that. And yeah, it took a little while for them to find their footing. But once they did, it was great. Sure. And... um yeah, like you know, like Netflix, they don't release numbers or anything, but um, they give creative people full reign to do what they want. And I think FX does something similar to that when they with like uh, Louis has yep. free reign to do whatever right. he, he could have had. They don't bother. And I hear yeah. a lot, a lot of the actors on Netflix, uh, the, the the people that produce on Netflix and like FX and stuff say they they leave you alone. Yeah, and, and, and you don't you, even in the '90s on the major networks, you didn't have people. You, you had people weeding through this. You had to answer to a, a room full of talentless hacks that were giving you notes. And I, I think I heard Zach Galifianakis recently. He's, he, show, he stars on that show Baskets mm-hmm. on FX, which just got renewed, yep. thankfully. That's awesome. And, uh, again, they had this wide-open playing field to do with whatever they want. And, the, and FX gave him a couple notes, and he said they were actually good notes, and he liked them. Right. But otherwise, they just leave him alone. Yeah, it was like, you know, I have Zach Galifianakis and Louis C.K. Yep. working together on a project. I'm going to... Keep my nose out of it. Yeah, There's... all I could do is screw it up. Right, right, right. So, yeah. So... That's kind of like this show. Yeah. I mean, I'm like, I push play. I mean, I push record. Make sure. Push record. Oh, and you. then... <laughs> it always makes me nervous. Uh, and just let you go. And yeah, just I try let not, me I, go. I try not to get in your way. Oh, well, now you're making me feel weird. No. It's a compliment. <laughs> okay. Whew. Um. I don't have a lot of – just like the studio notes of uh, – the studios of today, I don't have a lot of notes for Look Well. I think they did a great job, and it will – while we're not going to do it next, we are um, – it will definitely be reflected in my ratings. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, as we start our descent, please make sure your seat backs and tray tables are in their full upright position. What happens if you don't put your tray table in upright position? Whiplash. Yeah. And you know we're not responsible for that. No, I we, mean that's that's Molly's responsibility. She's supposed to go up and down the aisles and make sure it's done. Yeah. And we've never talked to her about what happens back there. Maybe sometime we should have her on, kind of like what, how are the frequent flyers? How do they behave? How do they follow the rules? Yep. You know. Yep. Who, who's wearing their aviator glasses? Right. Who's not? We're not responsible for whiplash, but we're going to make an announcement saying, you know what? Do yourself a favor. Don't get whiplash. This is how. Put right. your put your trays right. up. But if you don't, it's not on me. Nope. I sleep well at night. I, 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 we, we, we circumnavigate the globe. Yeah. We have a lot of instruments in front of us, a lot mm-hmm. of dials, a lot of buttons. Yep. Can't worry about some douchebag. I can't there. hold your goddamn hand to make sure you're not breaking your neck because you didn't listen to my announcement. No. We, we, we give you the website to, to go yeah. to uh, to listen to the show. Yep. We give you the blue link to watch the show. We give you a summary. We give you interesting facts. We give you a plot. We do a lot of work for you. The least you can do is listen to our announcement. Put your goddamn and be, tray table. Put it up. Flip that little thing around and make sure it doesn't come down and slap you in the lap. Oh, jeez. Oh, I'm sorry. You get me going on this? I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying I get, I get worked up when I feel like people aren't listening to the announcements. Arrogance breeds stupidity. Absolutely. Rotten Tomatoes. No score. Are you looking at the IMDb? Yes. Bastard. 8.8. 8. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and, and this one has, what, 362? 62 what? 362 different reviews. Does it really? I thought I thought it was maybe uh, the reviews. Don't get confused with just them rating. There's actually written reviews, which I thought there was about sixteen. Oh, I could I be wrong. These are just ratings. Then. I could be wrong. The uh, so but gra- eight, there's graphs on here. Three hundred plus reviews, averaging eight point eight. That is good. This is an example for me though of saying, you know who I like? I like Robert Smile. You know who I like? Conan, Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien. I am searching this out for this reason, and that obviously is going to give you a bump. But I am in their ilk. I believe that this deserves that rating. This is very good. Um, and so says the reviews. Look well. The funniest show you never saw. Ten scars. Best random TV surprise ever. Ten scars. Uh, the Thinking Man's Police Squad. Ten scars. Police Squad, another funny show. That's, that star Leslie Nielsen? Yes, I believe so. And it was supposed to be a funny show, but this is The Thinking Man. There's a different... There's, Absolutely. There's a Leslie Nielsen funny, and there's an Adam West... You know, yeah. the deliveries are completely different. Yep. Like... Leslie Nielsen is slapstick. Let yep. Leslie Nielsen is the obvious pun joke. I'll wait. I'll even wait. Leslie Nielsen is the Chevy Chase pratfall, yep. where uh, Lookwell is the the thinking man's Bill Murray. Yep. You know, yep. um, Lookwell TV series starring Adam West, Ten Scars. He he, uh, author Rusty sixty one from the United States. Oh, Rusty, <laughs> Ten Scars, uh, funniest thirty minutes. Ten Scars. How about now? Which I hopefully they're saying, hey. What about now? Put it back on now? Yeah. It's not going to happen, but I, I like the way this guy thinks. Ten scars. Um, Adam West, best work yet. Ten scars. Funny if you get it. Nine scars. Um, look well, as good as it gets. Nine scars. It, the proof is inside of the pudding. I cannot stand pudding. What? But, but, I, but I love proof. Hold on. The rapper? The, part of D12? Yep. Um, didn't he go? Didn't he go gay? No, no. He didn't he leave. Well, D twelve is no longer around because no. one of them was murdered. Right, but I, proof. I think he left the rap game and found the Lord. Was he the big fat guy? No. No. Who was that? Bismarcky. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> I don't know who this fat, fat fucking black guy was. It was in D twelve. He had six guys. I knew Eminem, and that's the only reason you knew who D twelve was, was because of Eminem. That's right. That, that was. I think D is Detroit, right? And twelve is their Dirty Dozen. That's the, the D twelve is their Dirty Dozen, Dirty Rotten Rhymers. I have the CD. Is that what they call themselves, the Dirty Rotten Rhymers? Yeah. D twelve, <laughs> Dirty Dozen. I don't know. Um, I know the purple Naughty hill, ra- purple pills. Do do do. I take a couple <laughs> uppers, I down a couple downers, but nothing compares to these blue and yellow purple pills. Pretty good. I've been to Mushroom Mountain, not once but twice, but who's counting? Something, something. Um, there's six guys, right? And it was called D12 because each of them had like another persona where he had like Eminem and Marshall right, Matters. Right, right, right. Okay. And then one of them was murdered. And so D twelve isn't is no more because of the murder. It would be D ten. Yeah, or or you know B twelve vitamin. That's what oh, I would. Oh god, I love it. Yeah, there was one, two, three, four. Oh, there's only five in there. There's six in his picture. Yeah, I don't know which one's dead. Anyway. One, one of the one of the black ones is dead. <laughs> there's there's Eminem white, five black. <laughs> so one of the black ones. God, that guy was fat ass. He uh, and and he, I remember. God, I remember, like one bizarre, of the, bizarre. That's, that's his name. I, Let bizarre, nah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna listen to that tomorrow because no. I, I got it on my iPod, on my uh, uh, iPad or iPod. Oh, I'm sorry. Bizarre. Yeah, yeah. I liked, I liked how fed he was because he, he like, and he wore a he wore a thing in his hair to like keep it from drying out. Oh, like a hair net or like a yeah shower cap. Yep. But he was uh he like. He like cut his shirt short so his belly was always sticking out too. Like he was where he was showing oh. his fatness off. Yeah, he like a badge of fat. Oh wait, maybe it was, maybe it was proof. <coughs> yep, yep. I'm shooting death on April eleventh, two thousand six. Proof was shot four times Ugh. by Mario uh, Etheridge, Melissa Etheridge's boyfriend. Okay. After well. an altercation broke out during a game of billiards. At the CCC Club on Eight Mile Road in Detroit, Michigan. Oh, sweet so it was irony! Proof. And a uh, funny thing about um, Eight Mile. Mm-hmm. Uh, do we have time? 
Absolutely, we've got time. <laughs> We're producers, right? We can do whatever we want. We do whatever we want. Uh, I was on a business trip in Detroit. I was with two gentlemen, an older older white gentleman and a, uh, a young black gentleman. Yeah. And the under, young black gentleman was uh, bragged about how he was, you know, he he lived in Detroit and he was from Detroit. From the streets. Uh, we got off the plane and we rented a car, and this guy was going to drive to where we needed to go. Acting like he knew where we were going, blah blah blah. Got us lost. We are at a gas station to get directions. I look over at the street sign, and what do I see? Nine mile. Eight mile. <laughs> eight mile. Yes. Holy moly. Yep. So you went to Ava. So is that a notoriously crap part of town? Mm-hmm. That's like the ghetto. And the ghetto. Mama cried and the baby died. Oh wait. Eminem cried when Proof died in the ghetto. ghetto. Now, uh, to me, if if you are Proof and are shot and killed, and then you are cremated, you could be Proof in the pudding. You could mix that in. True. Uh, do you really not like pudding? No, not really. Why not? This never. Like I don't. I hate tapioca. See, I like tapioca. That guy was fucking fat. This is. See, I, I don't like. You know, they, they cook cook a uh, pudding on the stove. I don't like that. I don't like cooking pudding. I you like want instant pudding. I want instant pudding, like the kind you mix with the powder with the milk, or from the little little rip uh, cups. I like that. Oh yeah. Uh, but the one you cook on the stove has got that like that skin on top, mm-hmm. and the people are like, I love that pudding skin. I'm like, that's the most disgusting thing I've ever eaten in my life. My grandma used to make chocolate pudding pie. She take graham cracker crust, sure, and then the the uh, chocolate pudding. It's, it's really not a pie though, right? Yeah, but it was that was. It's good. awesome though. The whipped cream on top. Oh yeah. Do you want to know what um, Bizarre's real name was? I do. Rufus Arthur Johnson. Pretty anticlimactic. How can you say Rufus is anticlimactic? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to FCF Airport. Local time is 11-11 and the temperature is 65 degrees. For your safety and comfort, please remain seated with your seatbelt fastened until the captains turn off the fastened seatbelt sign. All right, um, this is, it's crunch time. This is the, this is where we have to take everything that we've absorbed from the research of the show to watching the show to presenting our research, um, looking into the, all the critic reviews, everything. We, it has to be taken and molded like so much clay into our souls, and then now we must regurgitate a number that reflects how we feel. One to seven, based on the those classic characters from Wings. You got Brian Hackett, Helen Chappell, Lowell Mather, Joe Hackett, Antonio Scarpacci, Faye Cochran, Roy Biggins, one through seven. Seven being the best, one being the worst. Captain Restisher, I look to you and say, how do you rate Look Well? Helen Chappell. Helen Chappell. Uh, yeah, I think that's about right. Um, I, I, It's a six or a seven for me. I, I, oh, man. I, I can't go I can't go a seven. I don't know that there's anything wrong with this. You know, yeah, man, I'm gonna go seven. Wow, this is fantastic. That's your second seven of Couch Pilots histories, and they've both been given by you. Yeah, I. There's nothing wrong with this. This is purely enjoyable to me. I really like that. I can't think of one thing that I'd want to change, or, or one note as a studio head that I could give Smigel or O'Brien. You know, it's an average of a six point five. Then that's that's pretty damn good. That's the you're hard pressed to find better. Absolutely. Um and with that, and unfortunately so, we close the book yeah. on Look Well, but we have to. We have to. We have to move on. We have to trek forward into our next adventure. And that next adventure is um, Dark Man. Please join us next time when whoa, we watch whoa. the pilot episode of Dark Man. What's Dark Man about? <laughs> Funny you should say. Here's a little something to wet your whistle. A 30-minute unaired television pilot based on the original mm-hmm. Sam Raimi's 1990 Dark Man movie. Uh, you can find the entire episode by subscribing to Couch Pilots in your in iTunes or your favorite podcast app of choice, and then click on one of our classically blue links in our show notes, or go to YouTube and search tar- Dark Man TV Pilot. Um, we've done all the work for you. Just go to our show notes, subscribe to the show. You'll see the show notes. Click on the link. You don't have to search anywhere else. All this crap is going to be fed right into your phone, right into your iTunes account, your Stitcher account, whatever you use to watch it. It's all fed right to you. Boom, all you have to do is subscribe, and then it's we deliver it to you on a silver platter. It's a gift. It is a gift. It's from me and Captain Philip Restisher to, to all of our frequent flyers. We care about 
our frequent flyers. We wouldn't say, hey, next week we're going to watch Dark Man. Good luck, punks. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. No, right. it wouldn't be like that. It, here, here is what we're watching. Right. Enjoy it. Right. It's, it's odd that we're not on the new and noteworthy on I, I, iTunes. Yeah. It's odd. It, to me, it's odd. Um, because, we're, because we're making it so easy. Yeah. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Rate us. Sure. Enjoy us. Yeah. That's that's the most important part. You like, you like Sam Raimi? Who? Sam Raimi. I don't know people's names. I don't know why you do that to me. Based on the original Sam Raimi's nineteen ninety Darkman movie. Okay, Sam Raimi he did um he did uh Evil Dead one and two. He did Army of Darkness. You know those movies? I heard of them. Okay. He did the original Spider Man trilogy with uh Toby Maguire. Drag Me to Hell. Um, I'm, I'm missing a ton of things, I know. Uh, I think he did a lot of the um, is this, is this Xena. Like a, is this like a superhero movie? Which one? Darkman? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think actually Darkman is based on like a 1920s radio program initially. Oh. And it might have been comics too. That We're sounds gonna, like an interesting fact. Well, hold on a second. Hold the phone. We're going to dig into all those okay. interesting facts. All There's right. probably a mega truckload of information about this, and I can't wait to dig into it. Um, in the meantime, until next week, you got six, seven days here. If there's anything, any notes you want to make about Look Well, did we miss something? Something else we should know about? Is there something that you want to tell us for the future? Hey, um, here are the winning lottery numbers. Whatever it is, please let us know, and you're going to earn yourself frequent flyer points, which are arguably worth more than a winning lottery ticket. Oh, d- by tenfold they are. Absolutely. I'm surprised that I didn't. the reaction that you gave me when I had mentioned that he was sitting right next to his own picture on the wall. I didn't notice that in the show. Because oh, I thought you would have thought, I thought you would have noticed that for sure, and we, you would have found that funny. It is funny. Um, I did not. I probably I probably missed it because I was busy just writing, writing yeah. like a GD demon. Just <laughs> that's how my writing sounds. Really? Are you crying? What's wrong, baby? <laughs> did someone die? Oh, <laughs> proof. Oh no. G twelve. He just it's now hitting you. <laughs> Took a good ten years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was, we just was, passed the ten year anniversary of his death. You know, April oh, 2006, right? Yeah, and it's we're in the middle of May now. So. That's right. R.I.P. R.I.P. P.R.O.O.F. <laughs> R.I.P. P.R.O.F. Double O.F. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to send us any information about Pruth's uh, trial for his killer, if you want to send us any headshots of Proof, you know, whatever whatever you want to send us. Don't send us pictures of Bizarre. That dude is a fat fuck. <laughs> Titties bigger than any girl I've ever dated. Send it all. Send all of the titties to couchpilotspodcast at gmail.com. Go to fcfnetwork.com. We've got a bunch of different shows there, all for free, all on different subjects, some more educational than others, some very niche, some just some just fun. Yeah, and there's, there's links to all the social medias for all the shows. Yep, check them out. Uh, follow us on all of our social media platforms. Know what's coming down the pike. Know what to expect coming up. Help us help us create a better network. Sure. You know, uh, let your voice be heard. FCF Network is always checking our social media platforms and our emails to make sure that uh, we, we are hearing the fans. We are hearing our frequent flyers and what what they're interested in. Um, anything else that you want to add before we, before we sign off for this evening? No, I just was going to kind of sing a tune as we go off. Okay, I'm, I'm going to wrap it up here. Yep. And then I'm going to press uh, some yep. buttons, and I want you to sing whatever your heart desires. All right, All right fella. Uh, hey, everyone. This pilot may have been rough, but it's always a smooth flight here on Couch Pilots. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thanks, Captain Black. On behalf of Couch Pilots and the entire crew, we'd like to thank you for joining us on this trip, and we are looking forward to seeing you on board again in the near future. Have a nice day. Vietnam was bad, said Vietnam was really bad. God smoked a dreamer, but he hit a bad man. This has been a Fakakta Comedy Funhouse production, produced by Jason Tosher, executive produced by Blake Clayton. For more information and content, go to fcfnetwork.com.